And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, developer of the in de of the in development comic Paragon Prime, and the and the man some of you may know as the hero geek, the one and only Ronald, don't call him McDonald, Christian. How you doing today, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. I held myself back. I could have made a Florida man joke. <laughs> It's ironic. That's one of the comics that I backed. <laughs> I I have a but I have a buddy of mine in in Florida. When I saw when I saw I um frequently torment him with Florida man stories. And mm -hmm. when when I found out about the Florida man comic, I had to send yeah. it to him, and he start and he started swearing curses at me for for yeah. Like five it's it's minutes. funny. It's funny about that comic is that I it's not usually in my wheelhouse. It's not the kind of stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. But I just like this sound just sounds so interesting. And and like as a as a resident Floridian for most of my life, I think I would really relate to a lot of the humor in there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I I haven't read it yet, but but I have it to read. Um, and I'm sure it's really really funny. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, King of the Hill meets My Name Is Earl kind mm -hmm. of vibe. You yeah. Know? And anyway, <laughs> but um, and to, and to, and to be fair, I'm not a, I'm I'm not above making fun of my own state because I'm from Minnesota and everybody makes Oli and Lena jokes ar around here. <laughs> yeah, I, and, I'm proud to be a Floridian though. So and, you know, oh, no, there's a, there's a whole um, there's a whole play called How to Talk Minnesotan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and, don't know much about Minnesota, but and well, um. I used to hate growing up. I used to hate the movie Fargo because I would because well for one I know people who talk who talk like that, mm -hmm. and two, um, there a lot of people a lot of people started imitating lines from that from that movie just to mess with me. <laughs> you haven't seen that movie in a while. Mm -hmm. I should probably watch it again though. <laughs> but getting getting back to sane matters. Okay. Um. What what um talk to me about how you got in how you got into comics and what and we'll segue into where the uh, writing bug really started. Well, um, comics comics has always kind of been a uh, bit of a presence in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I you know read them on and off um, when I was like you know ten eleven years old and whatnot. Um, and, you know, now I, I was gravitated towards, you know, the superhero stuff. I mean, that was my wheelhouse. I just really love that stuff. You know, S Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Captain America, Avengers, mm -hmm. Justice League. Those are the ones that really resonated with me. Um, and, you know, they've always stuck with me. Um, and, uh, when, when I got into high school, um, I actually want to become a, a filmmaker and I actually went went to film school um and i went to college also um to film school and that did not pan out for me at all um mm -hmm. it was just a bust it was a complete waste of money um but i you know i don't want to be uh, you know a, a script writer like you know I want to write movies and stuff um and and then i just like well that just didn't it just didn't happen right so um so you know what I, I can probably write comics, right? You know, I can probably do comics. Like you just take, you know, what I love, you know, with superheroes, and I can write comics. And I mean, I've always had the writing bug, um, but uh, recently I decided, you know, with also, you know, take into account what's going on with the mainstream um, comic book industry. I've just been so disappointed with what DC and Marvel, in particular, have have been in recent years mm -hmm. and i just i was bitching about it bitching about it bitching about it and then one day i was like you know what i'm gonna stop bitching about it and i'm gonna do something about it i'm gonna be the change that i want to see mm -hmm. so that's that's how that happened and now this now this is a question that probably gets asked a lot and mm -hmm. i'm i'm guilty of ask i'm guilty of asking it myself but yeah putting aside the 
current state, when you were gr when you were growing up, were you more of a DC guy or were you more of a Marvel guy? That's a funny question cuz I was kind of both. And I've always been kind of both. I I I don't have a favorite among the two. I really don't. I mean, I love Batman, Superman just as much as I love Spider-Man and Captain America. Those are my four top favorite superheroes and they they don't there's no hierarchy when it comes to them. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh. Although given the given the ones that you given the ones that you mentioned, I do see a bit I do see a bit of a pattern, which leads me to ask: Did you, did you um th throughout your time reading comics, did you end up gravitating to what Professor Geek has called the aspirational hero? Definitely. I mean, for sure, Professor Geek is the guy that I watch a lot, and he was one of the main motivators for me to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Part of part of the reason I part of the reason I bring that up is since you've pro you probably noticed the same trend that I have of a lot of a lot of people both both um fa both fans of comic books and mm -hmm. fa and and um people in people involved in the creative process um, yeah seem to have this idea that the aspirational hero is. Ch is childish, old-fashioned, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. based on some sort of caricature of, of the of it from their understanding of the go of the golden age. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the 1950s of you know everybody thinks is cheesy and old-fashioned and unrealistic. And I've heard it all. I've heard all of it. And um, I'm pretty I'm pretty I, sure if you took a shot for every time you heard every time you heard Superman would be a jerk in real life, you'd probably be dead thrice over from alcohol poisoning. Oh God, yes. <laughs> I just uh, and I, the amount of times that I've gotten into arguments with uh, people on Twitter about the the Snyder movies, you know, Man of Steel and and Batman v Superman. Oh God, I just and the thing is that that's a subject matter that always just irks me and it always triggers me and I always get ranty. With it, and I have to, I have to really control myself mm. now. Um, when it comes to that sort of thing, when it comes to people discussing that or the deconstruction of superheroes or things like the boys, Invincible, or well, don't hold back on my account. This is the place where no holds are barred. <laughs> oh my god, I just, I, you know, and, and a lot, a lot of my friends kind of like, you know, really see merit in this whole dark, you know, mature deconstruction of the genre. Um, I just don't, and I don't understand it. I don't see the need for it. In my opinion, it completely contradicts the genre at its core. Um, but uh, a lot of people like it, and I don't know how to convince a lot of people um, that the thing, the the thing, the thing, the thing that I see it as is, um, when it comes to when it comes to the whole aspirational and cathartic, you need both. You need both. Mm -hmm. You need to. You need. A, you need both to have a, um, to have a kind of to have a kind of yin yang, um, yeah. relationship. Well, like like you know, Spider Man is a cathartic mm -hmm. motivational. I I love Spider Man. He's like top notch for me. Spider Man is. One of the, my favorite characters, yeah. But um, I'd say I'd say I'd say with a I'd say with a lot of I'd say I'd say a larger issue is the is the lack of a of what's come to be known as a series bible, mm -hmm. um, which is a term a term that's um used in oh, television. I, yeah, I know regarding. what a series bible is. <laughs> yeah, just had just had to make sure. Um, where in terms in terms of what to what to do and what and what not to do and while there's mm -hmm. something like that it doesn't it doesn't go it doesn't go far enough which is why you have people um doubling tripling and quadrupling down on um pe on finding ways to make peter parker suffer to the mm -hmm. point where it's become a meme oh um, yeah like that i mean the the point where i i think the point where i really stopped reading marvel comics was one more day I knew I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I knew how I I was get I was I was thinking as soon, I was thinking it was either going to be one more day or the clone saga. Oh uh, yeah, well the clone saga is pretty bad, but it's it was nothing compared to one more day. I mean, I just that just killed it for me. Like mm, I think I'm done. 
think I'm done. Um, I think what certainly didn't help with some, with something like one more day was the it was the int was the intent. Um, mm -hmm. is I do I do at I do at times feel that some feel that something that holds back the big two that um, independents don't have to worry about as much is the insistence on main on maintaining the a status, status quo a status yeah, quo with yeah. the idea of, with the idea of and he the idea of it, um new, that be, continuity yeah. will scare will scare off new readers yeah I, do, I this don't is something to... this is something that anime and manga don't have an issue with at all i i did not i did not buy the i did not buy the whole continuity will scare will scare people off when i was a kid simply simply because there were plenty there were plenty of serials and the, and the like that i that i got into um right right in the mid right in the middle of things um my fir the first com the first comic that i a that i actually bought was the new was the new warriors um it was a com it was a package that included the new a issue of the new warriors and an issue of um night thrasher Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, are we even gonna mention <laughs> the, the the new warriors that that Kibble Smith guy was gonna do? <laughs> yeah. I think this. I think this was before that. But you know, I know, I know. But you can't mention new warriors without mentioning that whole you know snowflake and safe space trash. Yes, yeah, this was lo this was long before the no. I, yeah, yeah. The story I, the storyline that I, that I had that I had jumped right into the right into the middle of. Mm -hmm. Was was to, well, well. Actually, there were two stories. One of them was the conclusion of the Thai sto storyline, where um, Midnight's Fire's grandmother was 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 trying to use the New Warriors along with a group called the Children of the Pact mm -hmm. to sh to short circuit this um, this MacGuffin and gain and gain its power. Okay. Um, there was also a separate story involving one of the other characters in the New Warriors who was. Undergoing tr undergoing a trial for accidentally killing his father and was being sentenced to the vault. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. seeing the conclusion of one story, I wanted to figure out what what happened to lead to that point. And then seeing the other one, yeah. I was I was like, okay, what's okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah, and yeah. and I d um my first my first entry when it came to go when it came to Ghost Rider. Was the mid was the Midnight Sun story arc, mm -hmm. um, which which involved the which involved Lilith com Lilith coming back and having having Ghost Rider and a bunch of other individuals trying to trying to deal with that situation. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you you had you had Hannibal, you had the um, the pre rebooted version of Blade, you you had you had Morbius. Um, mm -hmm. You had Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider technically being separate entities, okay. um, and then shortly after that, you had Vengeance, which is another story in and of itself. But the point is, um, I do agree with Stan Lee that every comic is someone's first, and the whole as an as an adult and the whole continuity thing as a kid didn't stick with me. As an adult, it sticks even less with me because you look yeah. at. You look at a lot of the kinds of television that is really that's really been making waves in the last decade. Um, stuff like The Walking Dead, stuff like Game of Thrones, um, final season notwithstanding. Stuff yeah, like uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, bre Breaking ba Breaking Bad. Um, a myriad of shows on pre on um, pre on premium cable, um, mm -hmm. whether it be whether it be Spart whether it be Spartacus or so or something else, that are very very serialized yeah um and bec and there's you and there's usually an expectation and you and usually discussion every every week about where things are going and what's going to happen next that's not this that's not to say one and done kind of stories can't happen these days it's just ser it's just serialization has been where things have gone in the last decade um a lot of yeah. net a lot of networks hate it but the network but but networks don't like it, don't like anything. <laughs> but the but the point is is that the whole the whole the whole we ha we can't we can't have too much continuity. It'll scare people off. Um, is la is laughable. First of all, I I think the okay so 
maybe 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 you know a way to kind of uh eliminate that fear is give people easy access to the show or you know like on a streaming service i mean that's why that's why streaming services are good for serialized television serialized stories because you can watch the entire show right then and there you don't have to you know what i mean mm-hmm. I, you're not going to go on on netflix or whatever and you're not going to watch you know episode five of a tv show you're not going to do that no you know and mo and um i do i do remember a few years ago the ceo of netflix at the time had remarked that ac- according to the numbers that they were doing the majority of their subscribers binge watch yes yes um I mean, that's how I saw the first season of Stranger Things. I just I binge watch. I binge that in one night. Literally. I um, I but I bin I binge watch a lot of stuff um while while working out. I'll just go. I'll just be on my bike and I'll just yeah. I'll just watch like five or ten episodes of of something. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, because because of. Be, I'd now I'd say I'd say that th- that um there is that there is the po- there is the possible there is the possibility actually you no know what I take that back because there's one there's one other thing that ma- that makes the whole continuity argument even even more nonsensical the advent of fan wikis and mm-hmm. and cha- and channels dedicated to just gi- giving summarizations of of a character's backstory, yeah. Um, Comics explained is one of the big ones in that regard. Mm-hmm. So, the whole yeah. Plus, um, now now granted, stuff like on stuff like manga has has a bit of an ad- and the independents have a bit of an advantage in the sense that you're not having a revolving door of writers and editors going about. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the reason why a lot of event comics tend to tend to be a bit of a sh- tend to be a bit of a shit show in the big two is because you've yeah. get, you've got like I'll use DC for an, for example you've got a team of writers and editors on the Batman books you've got a team of writers and editors on the Superman books you've got a team of writers and editors on the Wonder Woman books and if there's a if there's going to be a team if there's going to be a team up that involves all three of them then that means you've got you've got three teams who e- who each want to say in what's going to happen and they have to interrupt their arc in order to make this crossover happen and yeah it's uh, it's annoying yeah sometimes it could work like you know sometimes it's worked you know really really well like crisis on crisis on infinite earths or you know the infinity um gauntlet you know those stories are amazing really really good stories you know um but for every one of those, you know, the funny thing, the ironic thing about something like Crisis on Infinite Earths is that it was meant to clean house. Yeah, yeah, and DC has had to do that several times since then. Mm-hmm. You know, there was uh, Infinite Crisis, and and then there was New Fifty Two. I mean, there was Flashpoint, and then which led to New Fifty Two, and then there was Rebirth. Although Rebirth, I was a huge fan of Rebirth until. They brought in um, Bendis on Superman. I just, I was so mad at that. Because, like, I had stopped reading DC when E52 started, right? I'm I'm done. This is garbage. I hate this. I don't like any of this. I was done, right? And then I read, I was starting reading reading a lot of what what Rebirth was going to be. I was like, oh, this is is awesome. This is a return back to the iconic versions of these characters, you know. Uh, a return to the hope of of you know this universe, and I was really into it. And I read a lot of it, mostly the Superman stuff. That's what I stuck with, um, and I adored it. I loved it. Like, and, and thing is though, speaking of which, they were allowing Superman to grow as a character. Like they gave him a son. He was married to Lois Lane. He had a son. It was really, really great stuff. I love that stuff. And then what happened? They brought in Bendis to just obliterate all of the goodwill that DC had garnered with me at that time and now they're back on my shit list. I'm trying to remember if um cuz there was one there was one particular arc that I found that I found interesting that um that that unfortunately wasn't able to go anywhere because status quo and that was um that was Clark Kent dec- um quitting the Daily Bugle and go and going independent. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Was that in Rebirth or was that before? It might. It might have been. Bef- it might have been before or during. It's been. A, it's been a while. But... I read most of the Superman stuff. I read the Action Comics and I read the mm-hmm. Superman book and I read the the Super Sons and all three of those kind of covered all of those bases. I don't remember that. I, I know that Clark wasn't at the daily planet he was kind of like at smallville and whatnot i think they had lived in metropolis for a while and they decided to move to smallville um i think so i no i don't think he quit yeah but or whatever i don't remember that now when it came, when bendis came when bendis came along the big problem is well for starters um bendis everything bendis tur- touches turns to shit for some reason oh yeah um i will i when if someone played word association with him with me, I will always think of Avengers Disassembled, mm, and how no. how much of a tra- how much of a trash fire that was. Yeah. To yeah. And ba- and um that that along with stuff like House of M basically killed um Scarlet Witch for me for years. Oh yeah, and then they they took that approach with WandaVision, and that was a sh- trash show too. Mm-hmm. Um. And the thing. The um, the big the. But try trying to trying to bring trying to bring him in for Superman, which, well, it certainly got it certainly got them a couple t- a couple TV spots for about a week, but the problem the problem is Bendis um doesn't know how doesn't know how to write aspirational. No. The no. um, I'd I'd say I'd say when it comes when it comes to th- and maybe you'll maybe you came to a similar conclusion. The idea of an aspirational hero is not a Mister Perfect who's good, who's good, who's good at who's a goody two shoes and never says yeah, a bad that, word. That is that, not that, that. That is not it either. And a lot of people seem to mistake the aspirational hero as that it is oh flawless, perfect. I can't relate to this character. Kind of you know, no, no, that's not what it is. I mean, they have flaws. You know, and they're human. Mm-hmm. Um, but the I, I don't know. the idea of the aspirational hero is that is that this is that they are, is that they're supposed to be a representative of what of the potential that pe- that is within people. Yeah. Um. And that's that's also that's also why I've um. I, I certainly I certainly had my fair share of my fair share of deconstruction experiments as a wannabe writer over the years but as I got as I got older I start I started to have a have a bit more scorn towards the idea of de, of de, of deconstruction in that regard and the big reason is when a lot of people deconstruct and you probably saw this as well they're not they don't have they're not doing anything to replace it like if you're going to if you're going to destroy if you're going to destroy if you're going to destroy some kind of concept you have to bi- you have to build it back up. Yeah, or, that's or, that's or, the or, problem. Or put some or put something else put something else up um, in its place. Um, Look, take for example something like Watchmen. Right now, personally, I don't like Watchmen, but I'll admit it's a very well written piece. Yeah, you know, Alan Moore. This this thing is well written. I'm just not a fan of it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I think with Watchmen, it kind of like started this whole snowball of this deconstruction. And now we're at a place where that's essentially all we're getting. Every single popular show on TV right now that has to do with superheroes is a deconstruction. You got and The more- Boys, you got Invincible, you got this new Jupiter's Ascending show and which is ne- which is now which is now on its way out. Um which I'm honestly I'm kind of happy about, but um appa- apparently 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 the reason why the reason why it was get it, it got shit canned after one season is that it was ridiculously expensive to which I say, yeah, it's a high concept superhero project. Those aren't going to come cheap. Mm-mm. Um, no. I'm pretty I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the budget for a single episode of the boys is in, is in the is in the millions. Mm-hmm. Um. And when it when when it comes to when it comes the I think that's I think that's also the reason why um why some why some obviously as obviously since you've been seeing how how things have been going that's that's why um. 
That's why a lot of people ended up gravitating towards something like My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. um, I love that show, by the way. Yeah. Simply because. And th this brings me to, this brings me to what I was to what I was getting to what I was getting at when it comes to the whole um, aspirational hero because you look at a, you look at a lot of you look at a lot of cases with that with the way it's done properly they are net they are far from perfect they end up making mistakes quite a bit um, mm -hmm. a big a big thing when it comes to Superman is the is the fact that eh, is the fact that um there is that dark side is the is one of the few people who can make superman lose his cool mhm mm um yeah and the and of co of course of course there's be there's um there's the fact that with some with somebody like spider-man he keeps trying even though he keep even though he has just ridiculously awful luck throughout a, throughout a lot of his stories yeah, yeah. um and the, and of course, there's the whole thing with Cap. Although, um, I will say, a lot of when it whenever it comes to Cap making mistakes, a lot of people point up um, Civil War, but Civil War sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Civil, I I would actually go so far as to say that the MCU version of Civil War is better than the comic. Yeah, I'd, I agree with you there. I mean, I I was into the Ed the the Ed Bud the Winter Soldier comic. Um and then they killed they killed him and they made Bucky Cabin I ah, kind of was out I to me Steve Rogers is Captain America so I would I would not the idea the idea of of a of a vil, of a villain or anti hero ha having to try and uphold the um the ide the ideals of their opposite is not something I'm opposed to I mean I was I wasn't opposed to say Magneto. Um, run, running, running the, running the, running the Xavier Institute. Mm -hmm. Um, simply because, simply because he's, tr he's, it's a kind of shoe on the, shoe on the other foot kind of thing. Um, yeah, but in order for, for me anyway, in order for, for that to work for me, it, that the character has to have a genuine change, mm -hmm. you know? Um, take for example, Superior Spider-Man. I I never liked that whole thing where no. Peter Parker and and Doc Ock switched bodies, and that was just I did not like that. Like, no, no, you can't have Doc Ock in the body of, of Spider-Man. It just that didn't work for me, right? Um, I, you know, I'd be open to the idea of a villain, a reformed villain, you know having a genuine change right mm -hmm. if, if if written well you know um but uh yeah, yeah. um now that pr now that brings us to that brings me after all of this um dancing about that bring that bring that brings me to paragon prime now okay how did how did the character and how did the overall idea manifest in your head we kind of we kind of got the whole a response to Oh, to over deconstruction, but uh -huh. um, how? But how did the how did the well, character itself? Um, in in, co in combination with everything I mentioned um, a couple of years ago, I was playing a lot of uh, DC Universe Online, right? Mm -hmm. Um, basically, that's where I created him on that game. Uh, I'm just like oh, well, this guy or whatever, and I created him. Um, originally, he was called Citizen Prime, um, mm -hmm. but I got into a whole thing with this. This, this is real life, real life superhero who calls himself Citizen Prime, and he contacted me. Contacted me. Um, and like, oh, I, I'm using this name. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. I'll come up with something else. And I went through a couple of of iterations, and none, mm -hmm. none, none of it really spoke to me. Um, and then I started watching a lot of uh, of uh, you know RJ videos. You know, uh, the Fourth Age. Mm -hmm. Right, you know who he is, right? Um, fourth fourth age. I feel like I should know that, but it's not ringing a bell at the top of my head. He goes, "Hey, this is RJ. How you doing?" He starts all the videos like that. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, he's the one who's doing the uh, Thomas Valiant comic. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, it's, yeah, he, he, it's fine. It's fine. He makes a lot of videos about you know superheroes and stuff and he's he's a great guy i he's one of my favorite youtubers 
And he constantly repeating this term in all his videos, heroes are paragons of virtue, paragons of virtue, paragons of virtue. And the word paragon just stuck with me. I'm like, I like that word. I like that word. Um, and that's essentially how I came up with Paragon Prime. Like, that sounds really good. You hear that name and you just automatically think superhero. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how, how that happened. Now, the different elements, you know, I took I took from Superman. I took from Captain America. I took from All Might, from My Hero Academia. I took from uh, Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four as far as how how smart he is he's a kind of you know he's a scientist and inventor um i just took just different elements from different uh different characters and kind of just just mesh um and that's how i created him mm -hmm. yeah now i can now i can now when so, when um when somebody looks at the des, at the design of a character of a character like like prime um mm -hmm. I could I could see I could see some people drawing drawing allude obviously some people would draw allusions to Superman um I could see some I could see some folks drawing allusions to uh, to others but um where, but what what speci what kind of um what kind of characters and like were you were you drawing inspiration from for for his look for his design for for his for his design and his overall um power set I guess I'll say uh, well, his power set was a combination of Spider-Man and Captain America. Like I want, I wanted him to have super strength, mm -hmm. but I didn't want him to be Superman levels of super strength. I didn't want him to be like Hulk levels of super mm -hmm. strength. You know, like no, no, I, that's gonna make things a little too easy for him. I want him to really earn it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind, I actually gave him Spider-Man's level of super strength. You know, um, and as far as uh, you know, he he moves like Captain America. Mm -hmm. That that was my inspiration for the way he moves, the way he fights. You know, his acrobatic skills were was very much influenced by Captain America. Um, I also came up with my own ideas. Like I took elements from uh, Ant Man in a way, because you know Hank Pym created something called Pym particles, which allows him to shrink. Mm -hmm. whatever um with this i call them prime particles and he created these prime particles and they they actually they're actually the the thing he had an accident with something and that the prime particles infuse his body and that's how he gains his superpowers mm -hmm. he has you know enhanced abilities enhanced you know thinking you know uh, it levels up leveled up his his genius level you know where he's able to think faster than humans and all kinds of stuff. Now, is it is it a case where it is it a case where his where his nerves just take just take le just take less time to transfer info, or did or did it literally make him smarter? Um. Well, I don't think it made him smarter. I think it's the the, the latter, actually. The the former. Sorry, the former. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. Um. Which def which definitely makes which definitely makes sense because that because that would be a bit more natural than su than get than suddenly gaining a bunch of a bunch of knowledge without without um without someone looking a bit um off the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um. But w but given given that kind of approach, you meant you mentioned having him move having him move like um like Cap. Um, mm -hmm. What in per what in particular did you did you mean by that? Uh, mm, okay, so as far as peak human um, abilities when it comes to, to movement, like I just, you know, I've seen, you know, the MCU movies and I've read Captain America comics. I like the the way that he fights, you know, his approach to fighting, the, the way he moves, uh, obviously without the shield, but, um, and I didn't want him to fly. That's one thing that was very important for me. I don't want him to fly. So I had him not fly because I think, not you know I I, I love Superman. I mean he's mm -hmm. top notch for me, um, but I always like it better when a superhero can't fly. Given uh, just given this. given that, is it a case of instead instead of, instead of flying, you'd be doing the old school um, leap tall buildings in a single bound? 
Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just like, for example, um, my favorite version of Wonder Woman is the one who can't fly. Um, I just think there's just more interesting things with a character that can't fly. I, I don't know. It's 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 difficult for me. It's difficult for me to explain. And and I don't have anything against characters who can't fly. Who mm-hmm. can fly? You know, Superman is one of my favorites. You know, Thor and Iron Man, and they're all great, amazing, amazing characters, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. For some reason, I find when it comes to that aspect, I find characters like Captain America. Batman or Spider-Man just a little more interesting when it comes to that particular aspect, mm-hmm. you know. Um, plus, it allows you know, like you know, Paragon Prime has a has a flying car and it's just really cool. And I I don't know, I feel like I can't justify a cool like vehicle if he can just fly everywhere, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I did I did get it I did get a chuckle out of the des- out of the design. And and you calling it the Might Mobile? <laughs> well, no, that that's actually the the car of of a Golden Age hero mm-hmm. called Major Might. Major Might was a hero um, in my verse. Was a hero in the nineteen forties, fifties, and the sixties, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he's very much uh, very very inspired by Captain America, even more than Paragon Prime is. Yeah, um, but that was his car. I kind of kind of wanted to have like a. Kind of cross between the Batmobile from the '60s show and the and the Mach Five from Speed Racer. <laughs> so, would it be fair of me to say that even that even in even in the mini comic that you're de- that you're developing, um, there's a there's a gentleman's agreement, for lack of a better term, that superheroes have been around in one form or another for a while. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing about my my universe is that, um, like, uh, um. Major Might was the big inspira- aspirational hero uh, back, you know, in previous decades, whatnot. Um, and he inspired a lot of other heroes, and he was like, like, the the foundation, right? Now, um, in the story, um, he kind of gave his life to save Earth, mm-hmm. and without, without, without that rock of an aspirational hero, the Age of Heroes kind of died off, right? It kind of just ended, mm-hmm. right? So in the story, Paragon Prime is the next catalyst for that for the for the new age of heroes. You know, his his appearance kind of like ushers in a new age of heroes, and a lot of other characters. I have a lot of characters in, in the universe, a lot of other uh, superheroes and whatnot. So that's the general idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Because of, because of the whole thing of being of being the catalyst, I'm guess I'm guessing that there isn't there isn't any there isn't really anybody who can who can mentor him when for, when first getting a hold of his abilities. No, no, there there there's no there's no mentor. Uh, there's no Obi Wan Kenobi. There's no you know Jor El or whatnot. There, no. <laughs> oh, which is which is interesting because that ba- that basically means that for all intents and purposes, he has to be. So he has to be um, self-taught and and go through the whole affair on the fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be learning a lot. <laughs> and because because of, because of that on the fly nature, you ha- you have the, you have the fact that well, when you're when you're lear- when you're learning at when you're taking a learning as you go experiment, um, things end up backfiring. Oh, granted, things end up backfiring anyways because you, because you know, um, if you'll forgive me for referencing the Flash, you you're probably familiar with Cap with Captain Cold's four rules to planning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or to or in the in the way Sarge would put it from Savage Company, if you have a plan, throw it out because your plan sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I you know, and, and I I'm you know, I remember I, I made a post on Twitter a while ago about what my main influences for him were. I, I listed Captain America, mm-hmm. Superman, um, Reed Richards. Um, I forgot what was the other one. I, I, he goes, yeah, oh, this sounds like a like a like a Gary Sue, like a, you know, you're not gonna have him have flaws or anything. And that's 
that's the misconception that people have about aspirational heroes. I'm like, no, no, he's going to have flaws. He's going to mess up. He's going to make mistakes, you know, but in a different way than you're thinking, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to have him betray who he is or the aspirational aspect of the character, the hopeful nature, uh, the spirit of this kind of character, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm, I mean, that that's what a good writer does. And that's, that's what good writers of Superman have done before, mm-hmm. you know? And the thing, I rem- one one per- it's funny you mentioned Superman because there's one per- there's one particular um story arc from a few years ago that would later get made into an animated movie that I think uh, I think is I think I, that is one of my favorites. You're talking about uh what ha- whatever happened to Tooth uh Tooth Ages of the American Way and then it was adapted into the movie what? Superman versus the Elite, right? The, na- the name is What's So Funny About Truth What's so Justice, funny, that's right. About, yeah. about Truth Justice yeah, in yeah, the yeah. American Way. You I think you kind of fused it with the um Alan Moore Superman story of what happened to the man of tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I like that story, but that's a com- but that's a completely different apple to this orange. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. And and yeah, th- yeah, that was adapted into Superman versus the Elite, which um, I absolutely love because mm-hmm. that movie shows why a character, why a character like Superman is important, why aspirational heroes are needed. There was one line in the trailer for Superman Returns that I think that I think exemplifies the whole um, the whole situation, which it annoys the hell out of me that that line was not used in the actual film. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The whole they can be a good people. They just they just need the light to show the way. Oh God, I remember that trailer. Yes, yes. Uh, by by the way, I I, I love um, uh, Brandon Routh as Superman. I think. I mean, the movie is flawed, but him as Superman is just perfection to me. I'd say I um Superman. I'd say when it comes to a film like Superman Returns, you have the first off, you have the problem of the of the of the most mediocre di- most mediocre director to ever get a large budget in Brian Singer. Oh yeah, um, I, I I I'm one of the few people who is not impressed by any of his of his X Men movies. I, I just like meh. It, I think I think people I think people um I think people p- propped up the at least the first X Men simply because. Of the of the fact that the idea the idea of doing superheroes and at least trying when it comes to that kind of budget on the silver screen was not was not done was not done very much and there of, and of course there was that whole drought because of somebody was being really stupid and giving a and giving a eternal agreement to Canon Films. Mm. Um, yeah, which was which was how was how we got the god awful Captain America movie. Oh god, or the Fantastic Four movie that never actually made it to theaters. Yeah, that, I, did you see that thing? I saw that. I, thing. I, I did. And, um, <laughs> it was exactly what I would expect from Roger Corman. Yeah, yeah. It's, Corman has um, he certainly helped a fair amount of, a fair amount of people get their big break, but he's also a massive cheapskate. <laughs> Although ironically, you know, this is gonna sound weird. I like the musical score for that movie quite a bit. Oh, somebody somebody was working somebody was working on their paycheck. Um, yeah. But Superman Returns, I, f- I felt that it spent a little bit too much time trying to say, "Hey, you remember how awesome the Donner films were?" Um, so it was kind of, it was kind of a mixed bag for me on that on mm-hmm. that front. And it had some great scenes. I mean, my one of my favorite scenes is the the plane rescue scene. I mm-hmm. love that scene so much. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think the problem the problem with Superman movies is that they go back to two villains constantly, Lex Luthor or Zod. It's just one of the two. They they never go, you know, Brainiac or Metallo um, okay. or. When it comes to Brainiac, there was an attempt, but it was in that movie. It was in that. Um, it was in that movie that that um, was going to have Nicolas Cage, and given oh, what yeah. was planned with that, it is a good thing that never happened. Yeah, yeah, I, I know about the the Tim Burton Superman movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, like there's so many other great characters. Metallo, Metallo is a good character to start. You know, to build up. To you know, to Brainiac movie, like you have Lex Luthor in the first one, and then you have like Metallo in the second movie, 
and then you build up to like Brainiac in the third movie. Um, that, that's, that's I wasn't, way I, I wasn't even going to use if you if you needed a if you needed a gimmick hero, I wasn't even going to go with um Meta- Metallo. Um, I was going to go with Parasite. Parasite's a good one too. Yes, actually, um, I like par- Parasite's quite. Plus, you know. I th- I think that somebody with a proper budget could could um lean into could lean into a fair bit of body horror when it comes to that character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, that could be really cool. Um, and you could and you could have, you could have someone like Toy Man be like a throwaway villain at the beginning of the movie or something mm-hmm. like that. You know. Um, yeah. I'd I'd act, I'd actually I'd actually say given given the given the infamy of st- of stuff like the of the of the of the um of the pup of the jigsaw puppet from from the saw movies you can probably not 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 do an outright call call to that but just but just kind of play just kind of play on that little zeitgeist yeah yeah that could work um, um but uh, but yeah I mean Superman Returns was i mean ultimately like i hold that movie in high regard when compared to man of steel for example like when it comes to man of steel the the argument that i've made is that um snyder was not, was not the was not the problem the problem was who the producers were really i i don't know i i seem to think snyder was a huge problem i mean from what i understand he was the driving force behind this vision of, of of the characters the the reason i say that is the 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 um producer on, on the matter and someone who's going to have a high, and someone who's going to have a higher stake because of previous success was the david nolan goyer? brothers and david okay. goyer david okay. goyer especially is the is the one who i ha- who i have a particular beef with and i'm not i'm not alone he's the re- he's the reason why um is the reason why Snipes has had no has no desire to do it to do anything Blade related as long as he's around. Mm, he he's the one that says uh, some pretty crappy things about She Hulk and about Martian he, Manhunter, right? I don't re- I don't recall what he said about Martian Manhunter, but he did say that She Hulk looks like a porn star, which um give um given the, given the given the current state of that character, you know what? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. I know. Pe- I know people in that industry, and and several of them are really are really good people. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, go. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to deny any blame towards Goyer. I know he's trash too. Goyer um, is somebody who can only write can only write Dark Age style um, stories. Um. Yeah. If you as long as you as long as you keep him in that in that particular wheelhouse, he's fine. Well, ironically enough, I don't have an issue with Snyder as long as he stays away from the superhero genre. I enjoyed Three Hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked Dawn of the Dead. Um, was a the and then Watchmen was. He did the best oh. he could with Watchmen, given how, given how there given how there were like three different scripts over the years for a Watchmen project, and yeah. none of them got off the ground. Yeah. Now with Watchmen, I mean, at its core, I have a problem with with the with the concept of deconstruction mm-hmm. in itself. So my my feelings are mixed on on the Watchmen movie and comic. You mm-hmm. know, I I recognize that it's that the comic is well written. And Alan Moore did a really good job with what he did. I just don't like that concept in itself. You know? I will. I there is one. There is one thing I will give. I will give credit as far as as far as a gene as far as a standout when it came to when it came to that when it came to um that take on Watchmen, mm-hmm. and that is Jack Earl Haley's performance as Warshak. Yeah, he did. He did a really good job. Um, Oh, uh, I'm pretty. Yeah. I'm pretty sure afterwards he was developing back problems from having to carry the film by himself. <laughs> um, I like Patrick Wilson as Owl, mm-hmm. as Owl Man, as Night Owl. Sorry, Night yeah. Owl. Um, yeah, Owl, uh, Owl I, Man is it was is, from, uh, from, was from Crisis on Two Earths. Crisis on Two Earths. Yeah, uh, well, James Wood did amazing with that, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, Night Owl like. I gra- I remember watching that movie and I remember gravitating towards towards Night Owl and and Silk Spectre because they seem to be the only really heroic characters in the entire movie. Well, 
Night Owl and, and Silk Spectre are in a, in a way are in a way are kind of di are kind of dipping into this into the same archetype, and it's it's an archetype that I've been, that I've been fascinated by for years. That being the legacy hero. Mm -hmm. Um. You have, you have some you have somebody who's t who's taking on the name and the mantle of of a, pre some... of a previous hero. Yeah. Um. The two... So they feel like they have something to live up to, right? Yeah. Um. Of course, of course, the of course the big the big example of this kind of thing in um, comics is the Flash, since there's been um, f there's been like um, four or five incarnations of of the Flash over the years. Yeah, Jake Garrick, uh, Barry Allen, mm -hmm. Wally West. Those are the big big ones. I th and Bart yeah. Allen, I guess, and yeah. Paul. So there have been a, a bunch of them too. But yeah, um, Rob Robin is Robin to to a lesser degree. Um, yeah. But, and and the 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 idea of the idea of le of legacy is some is something that everybody can relate to in one in one form or another. Um, there's been and we, it's one that it's one that we've seen plenty of times in sto in stories. And truth be truth be told, I think I think I think one of the key things when it comes to re when it comes to reconstructing aspirational heroes is. As for, as um, Professor Geek had hinted at, looking at them as mo as modern epics, mm -hmm. um, like one of the best the best S the best um Elseworld story was, or, or not best Elseworlds, but the best All Star story was All Star Superman, and that was kind of going with a Twelve Labors of Hercules, yeah. as its inspiration. Yeah, that was the um, what's crowd? What's his? Writer's name on that, uh, Grant Morrison, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I li I have I have a mixed opinion when it comes to Grant Morrison. So do I. I he's... He, I know I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, because I feel the same way. I mean, he's written things like like that, and a lot of his run on Justice League from back in the '90s was really really good. You know, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem with Grant Morrison. He. He he has a bit he has a bit of a bad habit of getting lost in his own head, especially when it comes to really deep cutting um, DC minutia. Because mm -hmm. on one hand you've got that you've also got the fantastic work he did with Animal Man, but on the other hand you have Final Crisis, mm, <laughs> which yeah. putting aside Countdown because he put because he put it aside, um, Final <laughs> Final Crisis is. Weird. Yeah, Superboy. Uh, what was he? Was like a petulant child. He was like no, a that. W that was count. That doesn't count. Was um, it, was that? Wait, wait, no, no. Final Crisis was was with Superboy Prime, wasn't it? Was that, he the villain? That was in, in that was in Countdown. Well, okay, maybe I'm okay. Um. No, the, no. Final Final Crisis is where you is where you had the is where you had the weird reality breaking down and the anti life equation through helmets and su and Superman w winning by you by 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 ma by making some sort of musical note to count to counter the anti life equation and the idea of the and somebody misunderstanding the idea of the old of the uh, new gods as if they are literal gods. I must have blocked that, uh, this out. I don't remember any of this. I remember reading Final Crisis, but I don't remember any of this. I must have blocked it out. Yeah, I um, I unfortunately am not able to block this kind of thing out. <laughs> but with when I look at now when I look at the design of of um, Prime, which incidentally, and just having the name Prime is going to throw me off because I remember I remember watching the Ultraverse as a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Him. But yeah. he's basically like um, Malibu's version of Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah, but the one of the one of the questions that I had is because when I look at the design, I see a little bit of get a little bit of gadgetry. Is is it a case where he's building his own stuff the way um, Spidey would for the longest yeah. time would build his own web yeah. shooters? He, he he builds his own tech. Yeah, yeah. The the gauntlets that he has. Um, allow him to control the prime particles in his body mm -hmm. where he's able to generate energy fields, force fields, that sort of thing. The, his boots allow him to like boost and move faster and jump higher and whatnot, you know, um, 
I mean, maybe uh, maybe I'll get to a point where he no longer needs those things. So he gets to a point where his power level um, no longer uh, is at a point where he no longer needs these um, gadgets. But right now, it just looks cool. So I have mm-hmm. you know that. Um, but when it com- when it comes to when it com- no, when it comes to that to that particular um, to that particular setup. Um, is he is he somebody who would tr- who would try it who would um theoretically build a one off bit of tech to de- to deal with a villain or deal with a problem? Uh yeah yeah I mean part of that is the ten year old kid in me I have this idea for a story where he builds a mech suit. Um, I, I just think mech suits are cool and like I want to see him in a cool mech suit. To defeat a particular villain, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, it's just it's 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 little it's a little ten year old kid. I mean, like, yeah, I want to see him in a mech suit just because. Oh. <laughs> you know? Well, do you utilize a mech suit instead of doing the traditional pilot approach, having it that he's use he's using the particles as the as the interface. Well, I mean, I'm gonna have some of that, but I just want to see him in a robot suit. <laughs> well, we can't. Um, we can't have we can't let Japan have all the fun when it comes to when no it comes to exactly Japan like no 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 I, I just want to I want to see that I mean it's not gonna be like like you know Voltron levels of huge it's gonna be more like maybe Hulk at the Buster. most Hulk, Hulk, yes Hulkbuster that that that's it perfect actually. I was gonna I was gonna say I was gonna say either that either that or um or some or the or or say. Um, some of the lighter, me- some of the lighter mechs in BattleTech, but those would probably be a little not um, mobile enough for what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Since yeah. as much as I love BattleTech, all the mechs in that are basically tanks with legs. Exactly. No, no, he's gonna. He's more like like you know, uh, you know, Iron Man suit, Hulkbuster suit kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So. Um. Now for his design, okay. So I took a lot of elements. I my favorite color is blue. Mm-hmm. So there was always gonna be blue in there. Right, and I like the way they look with the white. Just I, I kind of like I had this idea. Like I like to call him a daytime hero. Mm-hmm. So the the image of blue skies and white clouds kind of just stuck with me. Mm-hmm. So that's why I made his costume blue and white. Um, uh, a lot of elements uh, I took from uh, what remember an episode of uh, Justice League where um green lantern and a couple of the other characters they go uh to this uh, alternate universe where the, the where where like uh john stewart's childhood heroes were real the yeah the the justice the justice guild just the guild yes and there was a character in, in that called tom turbine mm-hmm. um and he was actually an influence on paragon prime's design in yep. a way um, there was another character. This is a comic called Agents of Agents of Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I can't remember the, the main Dyna, Dynamo. I think was his name. Um, but his costume is 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 blue and white also. So I took elements of that. Um, I remember I want I wanted him to have short sleeves because that's just thing that looks looks cool. You see his actual biceps and stuff. Um. Um, but yeah, like a Superman with his belt and, um, yeah, I don't know. It was like kind of a, just, a amalgamation of different things. <laughs> well, that, te- that tends to be how it works. The, the saying, the saying goes, if you steal from one person is plagiarism. If you steal from a dozen people, it's research. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty um, much. And when it comes, when it comes to, now, of course, um, we can't talk, we can't talk about heroes without ta- without talking about vi- without talking about villains and in one of the updates on the GoFundMe for the, for the comic um, you brought up one called Power Surge. Okay, yeah, Power Surge is a really cool villain. Um, he was inspired by Elektra from Spider Man mm-hmm. and Captain Cold from Flash, right? So I took them. I want. Really cool, like like a super criminal, not really a super villain, mm-hmm. more like a super criminal, where he's not motivated by being evil. He's just motivated by greed, um, right? What com- um, 
would would no. given given that given that and the fact that since given that would you say would you say that another another I'm not saying I'm not saying that this was an inspiration but just in a similar tier mm -hmm. would be would be somebody like say um Scarface from not for, not not the not the film character oh, but the from, Batman uh, character from, from Batman character like uh mm -hmm. yeah the ventriloquist and, and Scarface mm -hmm. uh not really no I can't say that that ever crossed my mind when it come when it came to that character I I guess what I mean by that is is this somebody who would who would be com who would be committing who would be committing crimes with a bunch of flunkies or is he a so or would he be doing it solo well, in in this particular story, he's he's doing it solo, but he's not above, he's not above um, hiring thugs or, or you know muscle or whatnot, you know. Oh, because when when you say doing it solo, I will admit that that somebody else who comes to mind is um, Shocker. Yeah, yeah, Shocker. Also, I mean, I I draw, I draw a lot of inspiration. I mean, more more than I thought from Spider Man Rose Gallery from Spider. I mean. Uh, so that that particular character, Power Surge, has a lot of Spider Man esque kind of qualities. Like you could see him being a Spider Man villain, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I mean, his character. I mean, if I if I uh, if I you know do this right, his character is actually going to evolve. Like for example, right now he just has this really cool electricity gun, right? Yeah. And then he's going to get a power suit that allows him to control FC that way. Hmm. And then eventually, I have I hope to have him actually gain superpowers, like become superpowered himself. Yeah, just the just the idea of of gradual um gradual escalation. Yeah, yeah. So every time every time every couple of times that Paragon Prime encounters him, you know, He's upgraded. Like, oh, well, now I have to rethink about my approach about how to defeat this guy. You know, um, given given that kind given that kind of upgrading setup, there is one other um, villain from an up that um that com that comes that comes to mind because they because there was a kind because of the kind of upgrades that he'd go, that he'd go through in many incarnations. Mm -hmm. That being um, Crimson Dynamo. Oh, the Iron Man villain, right? Yeah, who. Was sort of in Iron Man two, but he was but he was kit bashed with Whiplash. Yeah, I remember that Whiplash. Yeah, that movie has its issues. <laughs> um, although they, uh, although smart choice on them getting Mickey Rourke to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but di but there's always but Crimson Dynamo has always has always been the. Been the one who's constantly trying to up, upgrade to out, to outmatch um, Iron Man, uh, Tony it, Stark. Yeah, it was there were t there were two attempts to have the to have the Russian equivalent Iron Man, and he was the one who ended up lasting because the other one was Titanium Man, who's been around over the years, but um, not as prevalent. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite villains that I can't wait to do a, you know something with is called uh lord viper now lord viper is essentially he's an, an immortal pirate right mm -hmm. i took elements from vandal savage rachel ghoul mm -hmm. and cobra commander those are my three main inspirations for this character um the story goes that he's uh he was a, a pirate mm -hmm. back in the 1700s and he discovered the secret of immortality and he kind of just you know over the years um developed this you know organization called viper which is yeah. basically like like you know like cobra or, mm -hmm. or hydra yeah kind of those uh, inspirations um but and he, he's just uh, go on. but even despite that even despite his origins as a as a pirate i'm get i'm guessing that i'm guessing that if he, that if he if if you were if you were to have if you were to go with his appearance, he wouldn't be, um, he wouldn't be dressed in the kind of liveries you'd see you'd see four hundred no, years no, ago. No, 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 no. I mean, he, I have like an old look for him, and I have a newer look for him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, no, he's I... he's just really cool. I have uh, this other villain called Eve, which is basically a female Ultron. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I have this, uh, you know, um, Randall DeMarcus, which is basically my Lex Luthor slash Norman Osborn character. With a lot of uh, with a lot of the characters that you that you've ta- that you've talked about in this, um, I did notice that a, that a lot of them tend to lean into the more tra- into the more traditional archetypes, or in some cases, are a bit lean a bit more into the SF end of things. And I'm cu- I'm curious if um if the if that if that's going to be intentional or if um or that if is you intentional. Have- yeah, I at least for the moment I. I've never been good at writing anything magic based. So so there's not going to so we're not going to have a XP uh, XP of the t- of the t- of the two big doctors in the big two. <laughs> not not at the moment. Not at the moment. Um I'm not saying that in- introducing magic is out of the question. But you'd ra- yeah. you'd rather not you'd rather not have eyes bigger than your stomach. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's that's accurate. Now, if I do do anything that's, I guess, relatively magic related, it's going to be more on the cosmic end of things. You know, other dimensional, like, you know, new gods kind of thing, or I celestials. Of, I keep thinking of amethyst for some reason. Amethyst? Oh no, not not really. <laughs> I'm thinking more like you know Thanos or or, or Galactus. You're, yeah, you think. Or... Um, when you mentioned other dimensional, that's that's something that that's something that came to that's something that came to mind given what I mentioned. But given that you're talking you're talking about the co- the that particular cosmic tier of things, I I mm-hmm. see where you're going with that. Yeah. Um, that's not that's not me trying to sl- that's not me trying to slide in the the idea of of bringing magic to it. It's just. Um, super. There are there are many wa- there are many ways that things can go when it comes to when it comes to superhero, and mm-hmm. it's the reason why um, superhero RPGs are are a hair's breadth away from universal style RPGs. What are universal style RPGs? Um, univer- stuff like um, GURPS, um, Hero System, eventually, um, Savage Worlds. Basically, get basically games that are meant that are meant to try and encompass as as many styles of play as possible, or um, the idea of this is a set of rules that can be used for any any kind of story. Okay. Okay. Um, GURPS, of course, is an acronym for Generic Universal Role Playing System. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, it's the big one in that regard, and it's the only one that ever got raided by the Secret Service. Wow. <laughs> Over a okay. complete misunderstanding. <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Well, they had put out a book called GURPS Cyberpunk that had rules for hacking, and somebody at the oh. Secret Service thought it was a hacking manual. Oh, okay. Wow. Embarrassing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but the but it's but given that it definitely it definitely sounds that you're that you have you have a bit more of a focus it. It kind of it kind of reminds me of of something that um that no that Nolan had said regarding hit regarding his run with the Batman films that he kept that he kept turning down because there was always there was always talk behind the scenes of of bringing in of bringing in certain characters in the Rogues Gallery and he had said that he didn't want any, he didn't want any um he didn't want any sci- any sci-fi heroes his words. Okay. Which is which is com- which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it, because in so many of his movies he has some kind of sci-fi MacGuffin, including all yeah. three of his Batman movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, the, uh, Inception and Interstellar and Tenant and whatever. <laughs> um, I think the only one that he the only one that he didn't is Dunkirk, and that's because that would have been in poor taste. And then there was M- Memento, which is his first movie, right? Um. Well, yeah, Memento. That one, that one as well, and I think that I think that was his first movie, and that one also wouldn't have fit to put some sort of um, SF gimmick. You could argue that the whole that the whole storytelling motif of it is the is the gimmick. So you're just gimmicking gimmicks at that point. But there's the there's of course the matter duplicator and the prestige. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now with with Paragon Prime, I I, I kind of want to stick to that sci-fi feel mm-hmm. um, I haven't found I haven't found a uh, a convincing 
way to introduce magic into the into the universe. Not not something that I'm that I that I like that I feel like could work, you know. Especially not... since you'd have to you'd have to answer the question how how is that magic going to interface with with some with a very tech leaning hero? Yeah, yeah. Um, to the point where I, I I don't know. I'm not saying that I don't like stories or or would they have magic in them? Mm -hmm. Um. But for me, it's for I personally find it difficult to write for magic because I don't know what the rules are. Even even when someone tells you what the rules are, to me, it doesn't seem like there are any rules. Like I watch the Harry Potter movies, like and they try to explain the rules of magic in those movies and whatever. But to me, it, they don't make sense. Like, but it's magic; you can do whatever you want. Like, but there's rules. Like that that doesn't mean anything to me. To me, it still feels like you can do whatever you want. You know, it's just something I have trouble wrapping my head around. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, um, with now with that with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, something something else that I I um I was curious about is the way your the way your particular art style developed. Oh, um, this is yeah. I I like telling the story. Um, I originally wanted Paragon Prime to be an animated project. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I had written a screenplay for it and whatnot. Um, and when I basically figured out making this into an animated thing is going to be near impossible, um, and I you know, and I and I um, shifted to making it into a comic book. I kind of wanted to maintain that animated series look, and that's why it looks the way that it does. Um, probably the biggest influence. As far as the feel, the tone, the look of Paragon Prime is Superman the Animated Series. That is at the very top of the list of influences for everything that I'm doing with Paragon Prime is Superman the Animated Series. Um, so that's why it has that animated series look. I definitely, I definitely saw some. It's not it. It isn't something that I'd consider obvious, but there I could definitely see a little bit of um, D, of DNA from um, Bruce Timm's work. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You'd be you'd be right on point with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I told my artist that those are. Oh, I, that's what those are the references that I gave him. So yeah. Um, and when I when it now um. The image that the image that I saw on the go, on the GFM regarding the Might Mobile that looks was that was that illustrated or was that a um, 3D model? That was illustrated. That was uh, someone I hired on um, on Fiverr. Which is it's, cer it's certainly saying something because when I look at it, it looks like a 3D model from where I'm standing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, he's he did an amazing amazing job. I kind of want to have that future retro look mm -hmm. where it looks futuristic but it also looks like, looks like it belongs in the 60s or the 50s and i think he captured that beautifully honestly i think he did an amazing job mm -hmm. on that on the car um but that 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 car is going to be featured in the mini comic because in the mini comic the story is that um power surge breaks into the major might exhibit at a, at the museum mm -hmm. at a museum and Major Might, like I said, is the Golden Age hero who died, whatnot. And, and you know, a lot of his stuff is displayed there. And you know, the Might Mobile is in there, so that's why I had that design because he's going to be featured in that. Um, and he's there to steal an old power suit from an old Major Might villain called Doctor Electron. So mm -hmm. Doctor Electron created this electricity suit that, like, it was super powerful and. You know, and um, it was super advanced for, for for it being made back in the 60s and whatnot. So he's there to steal that. And that's kind of the main driving point of, of the story for the mini comic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you now, as I, as I understand, as I understand the you're you're currently raising for a mini comic. And it, yeah. but it does it does sound like you have a lot that you want to do with um, with the um, sandbox of oh, Paragon Prime. So, so so much, too too much, too much. I think I want to do too much. Like I get ahead of myself way too much, and I I essentially I want to build an, an entire superhero universe. 
Yeah, I can, and that's that's cer that's certainly that's certainly something that I can um, for sure sh for sure endorse. Um, <laughs> because yeah, simply, I I, I kind of like my idea here is to like okay, so I, I kind of I know this is gonna sound um a little too ambitious, but I kind of want to create another DC or Marvel. Um. On one on one hand, I can see why you'd say that's too ambitious. On the other hand, there's a po there's a poem that um, that come that comes to mind. I'm not going to read off the whole poem, but I'm just going to go with one li with one line. Mm -hmm. A man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? Okay, I'm I, I'm shooting for the stars here. <laughs> I'm and, and I know this, and I understand it, and I, I just don't know how. How, how to be how, how to be anything else well um can, well um when it comes when it comes to that cons consider the following um you are i'm pretty sh since you since you follow a lot of the indies you're probably familiar with common america oh god i love common america so much it's yeah. it's a it's in my top five indie comics of all time like really it is and of course, of course, um, iconic has iconic has also has also handled um, for the longest time Black Hops. I have and, the omnibus for that. I haven't read it yet, but I have the the, the Black Hops omnibus. I eventually and need to read now, that. And now, and now there, and now that's and now the project that that team is kickstarting is a crossover between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one that one that's take one that's taken place over one that's been gra gradually been built gradually been built to o over time. Even mm -hmm. though even though they were made at separate t at separate times and are very separate um, stories, mm -hmm. the re um the reason I the reason I point out this kind of that kind of thing is that just within just just within those two particular stories you have a you have a micro universe into itself. Mm -hmm. So the idea the idea of tr of trying to of trying to build a universe in that regard is. Com is completely do is completely doable. It's just a matter of the f of the fact that Rome was not built in a day. Yeah, yeah. No, I I know this. Um, so I don't I don't intend I don't intend to knock you down as far as the whole wanting to build a new DC or something like that. It's it's just it's just the it's just the fact that that's something that I actively want to encourage. Um, yeah. Simply because of simply because that. of my own um my own ideal. But yeah, I, go ahead. I mean, that's that's the plan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an optimistic person. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist. You know, I'm a positive person, and I mean, yeah, this is what I want to do, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. right now I have things brewing in the in the background of possible investors because i want to get this mini comic done mm -hmm. and then i have you know deals going on right now that could get me invest investors to help me fund a lot of the other stuff that i want to do with this all right now I'll, I'll certainly be keeping a close eye on how that on how that um develops with time yeah but, yeah but right now the focus is on this mini comic that is my, that is my like I have my blinders on and that's my main focus on that mm -hmm. um but there's so many other stories that I want to tell with this like villain stories I have other other hero characters that are gonna that, that I want to introduce into the universe mm -hmm. I eventually I, I have an idea for a team book that Paragon Prime is gonna be the leader of the team you know a mm -hmm. Justice League Avengers kind of thing you know yeah I wow Mm -hmm. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and dealing with the hell of time zones to come up to my temple. Oh, this was a blast. I had a great time. This was yeah. awesome. Um, I, always, I always love talking about my uh, my creation. My mm -hmm. you know, I always love talking about Paragon Prime. Whenever you give me a chance to talk about Paragon Prime, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Of course. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. Sure, definitely, yeah. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I will come back 
on once the mini comic is finished and, and it's out there and people have read it. How's that? That's that's cer that certainly works for me. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. <laughs> and there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>